Welcome to this DevTV presentation on the AutoCAD.NET API training. This is the Introduction and Sessions Overview. Hello, my name is Wayne Brill and I'll be the presenter for these DevTV presentations. I work for the Developer Technical Services and I live in the Seattle area in Washington State. Developer Technical Services is a group of engineers who support the Autodesk Developer Network. If you see me at a conference, please stop by and introduce yourself. I would enjoy meeting you. The objective of this course is to understand the fundamentals of the AutoCAD.NET application programming interface and it is intended to help you learn the API on your own. Please keep in mind that this course is not going to teach you the .NET framework or how to program. Also the training is not going to provide complete coverage of all the functions in the AutoCAD.NET API. I do hope that after you have watched these DevTV recordings and completed the labs that you will have gained confidence in your ability to customize AutoCAD with this powerful and fun API. If you are just getting started with .NET, these links to the Visual Basic Developer Center and the C Sharp Developer Center should be very useful. At these sites you will find a lot of useful information and resources such as training videos and you can also download Visual Basic Express. Another great resource is the .NET Framework Primer for the Visual Basic Developer. Now let's go ahead and take a look at these sites. Here's the Visual Basic Developer Center. Notice that it's, there's links to getting started with Visual Basic. There's the link to downloading Visual Basic Express. Some other resources here. You can learn Visual Basic over here if you're new to development and so on. Here's the .NET Framework Primer for the Visual Basic Developer. You can see here some of the articles that this page has. This is a good one, What is .NET? Go ahead and click on that link. You can see here that there's an explanation of what .NET is, some information about the CLR and intermediate language, and so on. So these are some really good resources for you. Go ahead and take a look at those when you have time if you're just getting started with the .NET API. Now let's focus on the DevTV recordings and the labs for this training. There are eight sessions. The first session will cover how to create a Visual Studio project. This project will create a DLL that you can load in AutoCAD and it will have one command that prints a message on the AutoCAD command line. Next we will cover some simple user interaction and user input that will show you how to communicate with the user from the command line. In the third session you will learn about the AutoCAD drawing database including details about the symbol tables, transactions, and how to access and create entities. After this we will learn how to use database events and how to add a graphical user interface element called a palette set. In session 5 we will focus on more database elements such as dictionaries and other topics such as type identification and casting. The input point monitor explained in session 6 will allow you to provide dynamic feedback to the user through events that occur with the cursor. Following this you will learn about jigs which allow custom applications to create drag images when entities are added to the AutoCAD drawing. The last session covers more user interface elements including context menus which are right click menus. We'll also cover drag and drop functionality and we'll also learn how to extend the options dialog with custom settings. The training includes a Dev TV recording for each section as well as the lab. The labs are provided in both VB.NET and C Sharp. The labs are provided in Word documents and these Word documents contain an overview of the labs as well as the lab steps. There are also Visual Studio projects with the lab steps in the source code as comments. So you can do the labs in two ways. The first way is to create your own project and copy in the comments from the Word document. The other way is to use the Word document for the general overview and then just use the provided Visual Studio projects to complete the lab steps. The first lab is a little different however. The goal of this lab is to create a new Visual Studio project so we don't provide a Visual Studio project for this section. If you need an example of a completed project for lab 1, you can take a look at the completed lab 2. For labs 2 through 8, there are Visual Studio projects that are completed and these can be used as a reference if you run into a problem. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the labs for the training. Here we are in lab 1, it's a Word document. 
you can see here that it has some overview of what to do in this lab or what this lab will do. Then it has the steps that you follow. And as we go down through this, you'll see screenshots to help you understand what to do. And then you finally get to some code that you add to the source window in your Visual Studio project. You can add this code right here. This is defining a command and when you get through with this lab, you can load it into AutoCAD and you can see a command that runs. The main point, I'm just trying to show you how these labs are laid out. Now, the, if we go over to Lab 2 document, you see it's a little different for Lab 2. We use the .NET wizard here to create a application for AutoCAD. The main difference here is you'll see comments that you can add to the project. So if you're using your own project, you would copy and paste this code into your Visual Studio project. Or you could open up the Lab 2 project. Lab steps are already there. So here we are in Lab 2 in Visual Studio. And the lab starts down here. You see start of Lab 2. And this is, has the comments already added. So this is probably the, how I would go about doing the labs. I would use those documents to look at the overview of the what the lab does and then go ahead over to the project and just follow the code along. Either way you want to do it is great. When you work through the labs, you may want to find more information about the AutoCAD.NET API. For this, you can use the AutoCAD.NET Developer's Guide at this location here. Another resource is the AutoCAD Developer Center, where you can download the .NET Visual Studio Wizard. You will need the wizard for Lab 2. There is also a link on the Developer Center where you can download a DWF file and this is an object model of the AutoCAD.NET classes. I would also recommend downloading the ObjectARX SDK to get the documentation and the .NET samples. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what the ObjectARX SDK looks like. When I have installed the, this SDK, it has a folder structure like this. What I would take a look at is in the docs directory, you can open up the ARX Developer's Guide and notice that it has a section on using AutoCAD.NET for AutoCAD development here. You can also take a look at the .NET samples that are in the Object ARX SDK. Here you see what's available. You have Ellipse Jig and so on. This Hello World sample has some examples for creating a menu and some COM API. So you can see here that there's a pretty good coverage with these samples that you can take a look at. Another resource is the AutoCAD.NET Developer's Guide. You can see here we have a, an introduction, getting started with Microsoft Visual Studio, basics of the AutoCAD.NET API. So there's a lot of information here you can use to learn the .NET API as you're going through the labs. Just remember these resources can help you as well. Some of you may be unfamiliar with the Autodesk Developer Network, so here's a little more about it. The Autodesk Developer Network is a program that provides professional support to programmers writing add-in applications for Autodesk software. If you think the program benefits listed here would be useful to you, then visit this URL and read more about it. You don't have to be a commercial software developer to join ADN. Thank you for your interest in learning the AutoCAD.NET API.